welcome back to the channel we have a question here um on work and agent power from november 2021 um if you're new to the channel please subscribe and um let's start the first question says um state the principle of conservation of mechanical energy right uh, it states that the total mechanical energy in an isolated system is conserved uh, that is uh, the sum of the potential energy and uh, the kinetic energy at a certain point is it will always be equals to the sum of the, the potential energy and the kinetic energy at any other point is conserved 5.2 it says use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to calculate the speed of the box when it reaches point p um so let's have a look uh, the height at which it starts at is five meters and then at point q height is zero um it slides down so velocity initial um thereby a height of five meters is zero meters per second and at point q is what we are interested in um so because we know that mechanical energy is conserved in an isolated system we can use the formula we have here on 5.1 to calculate 5.2 um, usually these questions are always like this uh, whatever you define on the first question you are going to use it to answer the question that follows so ep potential energy is mass divided by a uh, multiply by gravity multiplied by height so that is going to give us two multiply by 9,8 multiply by 5 plus the kinetic energy at the top which is 1 over 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 0 squared because um, because uh, it's sliding down so it's coming from stationary right uh, this is equals to the mag the potential energy at the bottom which is 2 multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by 0 because now the height is 0 right at point Q and then we have plus 1 over 2 multiplied by 2 the mass multiplied by Vf squared um, so there we have it we are only left with one variable so we can do a bit of math and rearrange the equation so we're going to have 1 over 2 multiplied by 2 vf squared equals to 2 multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by 5 um, minus this expression here which is going to fall off this is going to give us zero um, the next step will then be to divide both sides by 1 over 2 multiplied by 2 uh, which is just uh, vf squared equals to this expression here divided by 1 because 2 divided by 2 multiplied by 1 over 2 is just 1 so we're going to have 2 multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by 5 um, we take the square root on both sides we have the square root of vf squared equals the square root of 2 multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by 5 so we get v equals to let me put that into my calculator real quick um, I have 2 multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by 5 and then I take the square root I get um, 9.899 meter per second um, that's how you would determine vf at point Q, um, we stick into the conservation of uh, mechanical energy. Uh, let's go ahead and do 5.3. The question says, um, okay, the box passes point Q and moves 10 meters. Hmm. 
uh, on a horizontal surface before striking a barrier at point R at a constant speed of Oh no, not at, not at a constant speed, at a speed of 4 meter per second. Use energy principles to calculate the magnitude of the average frictional, frictional force on the box as it moves from point Q to R. So we have our box there, um, we have a normal force that is always acting um, as you mean the object is on the surface and we have gravity that's always acting period and then we have a uh, frictional force that is opposing the motion and then that's about it um frictional force is the only non-consecutive force we have uh, that's doing any work so sticking to the energy principle that to the energy principles uh, we have work net which equals to change in kinetic energy um, we already know uh, what the change in kinetic energy is because we have VF and VI right so that would give us uh, work done by friction uh, because work done by FG it's zero and then work done by normal force is also zero so we just ha have work done by friction uh, this will give us 1 over 2 m vf squared minus 1 over 2 m vi squared. Um, yeah, for work done by friction, we can then break it down and then we have frictional force multiplied by delta x multiplied by cos of theta equals to 1 over 2 m um v vf squared minus vi squared um so we have fr multiplied by 10 meters uh, multiplied by cos of 180 degrees equals to 1 over 2 multiplied by 2 kgs um vf when it strikes uh r when it it gets to R is 4 meters per second, right? So we're going to have 4 squared and then VI at Q is what we calculated above 9,899 squared. Um, that will so now let's make FR the subject of the formula. We are gonna get um, FR equals to 1 over 2 multiplied by 2, um, 4 squared minus nine comma eight nine nine um squared the squared is inside the bracket uh divided by ten multiplied by cos of 180 degrees uh let me just put that into the calculator real quick um we have uh four squared minus nine comma eight nine nine squared divided by uh, 10 multiplied by minus 1 uh, so fr in this case will be 8,2 newtons uh, let's move to 5.4 um, so we have 5.4 um, as soon as I see the word impulse, I'm thinking F net equals to delta P divided by delta T. Uh, in this instance, it's been said that uh, there's an impulse of 14 newtons uh, by second uh, to the left, right? So if you take in the right as positive, then the left will be negative. Let's do that. So we're going to have minus 14 um equals to delta p uh, divided by one um delta p is 14 newtons uh, multiplied by second and if you solve this this is what you get right uh let's make delta p the subject of the formula we're gonna have delta p equals to minus 14 and then what is delta p delta t p is mass 
velocity final minus velocity initial equals to minus 14. We know the mass of the object is 2 kg. We know the velocity final is what you're looking for. And the velocity initial is our previous velocity final. Um, so this will be 4 meters per second equals to minus 14. Um, if we divide both sides by 2, we get Vf minus 4 equals to minus 7. Take 4 to the other side, we get Vf equals to minus 3 meters per second. Um, but then Vf is not the only thing we are interested in. We are interested in the change in kinetic energy. So that will be um, change in Ek equals to 1 over 2 m vf squared minus vi squared 1 over 2 the mass is 2 kg vf squared is minus 3 which is going to get squared so uh, the negative sign is going to disappear so we have minus 3 squared minus v initial squared which is 4 um, squared um let me put that in my calculator real quick actually let's just solve it this will give you one uh this will give you nine and then this will give you 16. uh nine minus 16 that is minus seven so we have minus uh seven uh joules yeah and that's it for the equation thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and go through the channel. There's a lot of other nice videos.